Alright guys, so here's a brief tutorial on keeping Cephalotus follicularis, the Albany pitcher plant. To most people, this plant is considered to be the gem of any carnivorous plant collector's uh, prize collection. Um, I think it's like an amazing plant. Uh, if you take a good look here, the prehistoric look. The traps are so neat in appearance. Overall, it's just a very, very cool looking plant. Very, very cool indeed. I mean, if you just look at these traps, the teeth like projectiles on them, it's very neat. So we'll start off by going through the basics of the plant's care. And then after that, I'm going to show you my plan to uh, do some close-ups and show you. So yeah, um, Cephalotus follicularis, it's the Australian pitcher plant, also known as the Albany pitcher plant. Um, basic care, uh, for me, I use a soil mix um, of peat moss, one parts peat moss to two parts perlite. Cephalotus follicularis needs a soil that drains very well. They're, they don't like to sit in water too much. Uh, it's important to make sure that their soil has no source of nutrients in it at all. So that's why uh, you would use the peat moss, which is a very acetic substrate that is the decomposed sphagnum moss. Um, yeah. Uh, it's also similar soil mix to that of a Venus flytrap if you keep them. So there are different soil mixes. There's like you could use 50% peat moss, you could use some silica sand and perlite, mix them together. Uh, you could use 100% peat moss. It depends. Every grower has their own personal preference for the mix. Lighting. Um, all plants obviously need photosynthesis. But uh, Cephalosola, er, sorry, Cephalotus follicularis will require partial sun, so not complete beaming sunlight, not full, uh, well partial to full is beneficial. Uh, some people grow them on windowsills in full sunlight, that way it's more or less filtered. Um, but if you really want to, based on the Venus flytrap care, Guy or VenusFlytrapCare.com's care sheet. Uh, they say that uh, 40 watt fluorescent lights, 14 hours during the growing season, um, and reduced during the winter season uh, for two, 12 to 13 hours total will work as well. For water, uh, that's also a different story. You're going to want to use rain or distilled water or reverse osmosis water. Never use tap water. I've mentioned it before. Tap water is not something you would like to use on these plants. Uh, seeing as the minerals, trace minerals inside tap water may not kill the plant right at first, but for carnivorous plants it will eventually build up in their soil and your plant will just suddenly just give in and die. Um, the soil should just be kept evenly moist. It should never be allowed to dry out but it shouldn't be wet or soggy again. Heat tolerance. A lot of people say that uh, Cephalotus follicularis uh, cannot tolerate a lot of heat, but usually as long as you give them a nice cool night, they'll be fine. So they just need that cool night. But then again, using a deep pot is also convenient. If, you can, if you're gonna keep them outside or anything like that in filtered light, Give them a deep pot so their roots stay cool and they should be fine. Just careful with uh, the leaves burning. You want to adjust them to being outside Don't if they're used to being inside. Uh, for humidity, uh, it doesn't really matter. Most carnivorous plants uh, require the same amount of humidity. It can, like Usually it can be as low as 50%, but for Nepenthes, it's best to keep it higher, but as long as you're keeping that substrate nice and moist, they should be fine. During the winter, Cephalotus will experience a winter rest. 
similar to a dormancy. This is when the plant will produce its non-carnivorous leaves. Cephalorus follicularis produces non-carnivorous leaves to undergo photosynthesis and its pitchers to catch insects for, you know, its nutrients. So it's a very interesting plant in that sense as well, seeing as Nepenthes, which is another form of pitcher plant that's carnivorous, uh, its pitchers are just an extension of its leaf. They're not actually separate in any way. So yeah, during the winter is when the plant will produce its non-carnivorous leaves and you should give them shorter daylight hours and lower the temperatures to from 55 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 to 21 degrees Celsius. And yeah, as the Venus flytrap care guide, uh, or care site, sorry, uh, specifies, and as you should know, it is crucial that you do give the plant this dormancy period. So you can see my temperatures aren't very high. I am kind of putting the plant through its dormancy and it is growing quite a few large leaves which are non-carnivorous but it does have some pitchers too but it is crucial to the plant it needs this resting period before the growing season or it will just mysteriously die as well it could eventually just give in and die it could suddenly die so yeah winter rest is a must um let's see yeah there are a lot of different cultivars for the Cephalorus folicularis, the Australian pitcher plant, or Albany pitcher plant. Uh, according to the site, there's the Eden Black, the Dudley Watts, Crimson, Adrian Slack, Big Boy, German Giant, Giant, Hummer's Giant, Yvonne's Giant, Julie Jones, Philman, and Vigorous Clumping. I'm only really familiar with the Hummer's Giant and Giant forms. Uh, the traps can get huge. My plant, though, is just a typical... Uh, platform. So yeah, that's the basics to their care. Um, my plant's growing quite nicely. I usually water it just by a little bit of moistening the soil maybe twice a week. Just a little. Like I pour a bit of water down. I don't give it a big soaking or anything. For lighting, uh, my plants have every the same lighting as the rest of my greenhouse plants. I have two compact fluorescents in the hood up here and a exoterra fluorescent uh, UV bulb designed for plant growth and then I also have an aquarium fish lamp that's 20 watt, 25 watts to increase the heat since my room is pretty cold in the winter so yeah that's that's what this plant has for its uh, heating so yeah now I'll show you guys my plant Alright, so closer look at Cephalotus follicularis. Here's a mature pitcher. If your plant gets plenty of light, uh, ideally, its pitchers will turn red. These are fresh pitchers, so they're still green. But with the artif artificial lighting I have, they're probably not going to go very red anyway. So again, here are some of the non-carnivorous leaves. During the dormancy period, as long as you're careful, this is a good time to take cuttings too because it's producing the non-carnivorous leaves. Actually, over here, I took two cuttings. I have an actual pitcher and a leaf, which is right there, and the pitcher is right here. And I gave them some rooting hormone and hopefully they'll grow because I love cephalotis. So yeah, that's a good time to take cuttings. Let's just turn the plant a bit here. Here's another mature trap. Very cool. So yeah guys, I hope this helps a bit. I um, thought I'd make the video because honestly there there aren't any care sheets on Cephalotus on YouTube. So I guess I'll set the standards for a basic one. Thanks again. Uh, I'd like to credit this video to, aside from my own knowledge, uh, a lot of it was thanks to venusflytrapcare.com. They have a cool forum. You should join. Anyone's welcome. It's great. So yeah, thanks guys. Take care. Bye. Alright guys, so I hope you've enjoyed my last couple of videos. Um, I just want to do a quick update here. Uh, I hope you guys are all having a good the year so far, 2010, I like the even number, it's just going to be a good year I hope. 
But uh, I just want to give you guys a heads up. I'm going to try and answer everybody's comments as much as I can. But bear in mind that I am still uh, in school my last year and I have exams coming up not next week but the week after so things are getting a bit tight scheduled I have lots of assignments and work to do so unfortunately I won't be uh, as up to date with everything as I was before so I just want to make some videos to keep you guys busy for a bit and I mean hopefully I'll still be able to keep some videos coming but uh, if not hang in there and uh, after exams I'll I'll have some stuff up. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Till next time. Bye.